Thank you for coming to this session. I'm Toshiaki Taoka from Nagoya, Japan. The title of my talk is Advanced MR Technology to Improve Imaging Value in Clinical Practice. I took this photo. This is a photo of Kingfisher, a very small bird, as small as a ball of, for baseball. And usually, Photograph of such a small bird flying in the air needs a very big and expensive lens like this. However, I took this photo by using such a small and less expensive lens. How did I do that? This is the original image I took with a small lens. As you can see, it's a noisy photograph. However, by applying a deep learning noise reduction system, uh, which is commercial avail commercially available for as much as $100, this noisy photo comes to a clear and beautiful image. The same story will happen in the medical images. I introduce Advanced Intelligent Clear IQ Engine, AICE, which is implemented in MRI or Canon medical system. This is a technology based on convolutional neural networks applied to image denoising. Machine learning is performed using noise and as a discrimination factor among high frequency component as training data. Input image is still divided into the low frequency component and high frequency component and the noise reduction is performed to the high frequency components. This is a report on the AICE applied on MR cystelnography. By using noise reduction technique, the SNR of the CSF and PONS was significantly higher, and there is no significant difference in the contrast of the CSF and PONS and also no significant difference in the sharpness of the normal trigeminal nerve on who lies at half maximum. AICE can improve the image quality of MR cystelnography by reducing image noise without sacrificing contrast or sharpness. One of the important characteristics of AICE is adjustable noise removal strength. AICE has a soft shrinkage function that sets a threshold for noise reduction. In this function, input signal below the threshold regarded as noise and zero is output. So the threshold value can be switched in the proportion to the amount of noise. The strength of AICE also can be changed. This uh, example of T2 weighted coronal image taken in short acquisition time. Upper low has low strength and the lower low has higher one. By selecting AICE strength and AICE threshold, we can get images with adequate level of noise reduction for diagnosis, which is comparable with longer acquisition time images. Neuromelanin image one is one of challenging techniques to visualize neuromelanin in local cellulis, cellulis, which are very small structure in the dorsal part of the pons. On the image without AICE, noise reduction, a large amount of noise that disturbs a small signal of local cellulis. By selecting adequate AICE noise reduction, we can get satisfactory image of local cellulitis. However, we have to be careful that if uh, we select an inadequate threshold of AICE, the image would be blurred and the visualization of structure would be spoiled. The dynamic contrast enhancement method is necessary for visualizing and then diagnosing pituitary microadenoma. However, there is a trade-off between the temporal resolution and spatial resolution. When we try a very thin slice thickness and short acquisition time interval, the image would be very noisy. By applying adequate AICE noise reduction, 
the pituitary microadenoma can be visualized clearly. Coverage of the whole pituitary gland is shown. We can get six slices for pituitary gland and very small pituitary adenoma can be uh, easily recognized by applying AICE. We show a case with short segment stenosis in the left MCA. We can see short but severe stenosis in the proximal part of left MCA and the subtractive 3D MRI by ASL shows delayed circulation in the left MCA territory. We try to make dynamic contrast intracranial vessel wall imaging for this case. The whole brain 3D FASE images uh, with motion sensitized driven equilibrium, MSDE, has been achieved in one minute interval. We can see subtle contrast enhancement in the vessel walls of these images. However, the images are so noisy and the vessel wall enhancement is difficult to recognize. We applied AICE noise reduction to these images. We can easily recognize uh, wall and uh, wall, arterial wall enhancement, and we can also find that the enhancement shows uh, increasing pattern on dynamic acquisition. On the same image dataset, we also applied a permeability process by using extended TOFS method. And we have got K-trans images. On K-trans image without AICE, noise from brain parenchyma disturbs the recognition of the vessel wall permeability. However, by applying AICE denoising, we can easily recognize the increased permeability of the arterial wall at the site of the MCA stenosis. AICE can make adjustment considering the G factor in parallel imaging uh, from version seven software. G factor is a ratio of SNR for unaccelerated image and that of the accelerated image. On AICE processing, uh, especially non-uniform noise reduction based on G factor distribution is made. AICE can uh, adaptatively reduce non-uniform noise, noise uh, described by G factor in parallel imaging. We show a 3D T2 weighted image with conventional AICE noise reduction and an image with AICE noise reduction with G factor consideration. By subtracting, subtracting these two images, we can recognize the distribution of noise reduction factor. There is stronger noise reduction in deep part of the brain in which SNR is insufficient in parallel imaging. AICE noise reduction with G factor consideration can bring satisfactory result in visualization of the nigrosome in the substantia nigra. Nigrosome is a cluster of dopaminergic neurons within the substantia nigra and visualized as a relatively high uh, signal area. The volume loss of nigrosome is important diagnostic information in the cases with Parkinson's disease. As nigrosomes are located in the deep part of the brain in which SNR is insufficient in parallel imaging, uh, by applying adequate strength of AICE with G factor consideration, nigrosomes are satisfactory visualized. I would like to move on to the next topic image diagnosis for Meniere's disease. Let me ask a question. I will show you MR cystenography of two cases, case A and case B. Which case has many other disease? I'm afraid that you cannot make diagnosis on these images. These two cases look quite similar. How about this image? This time, the two cases look quite different. In case B, 
we can see large black area in the vestibulum and also in the cochlea. But what are these images? Let me explain the perilymph and endolymph in the inner ear. Perilymph is fluid uh, within scala vestibuli and scala tympani in the cochlea. Perilymph has similar in composition to CSF and intravenously administrated GBCA enters the perilymphatic space uh, preferentially. Endolymph is fluid within the cochlear duct. Endolymph has similar composition to cytosol. An important point is that endolymph is separated from perilymph. Intravenously administrated GBCA does not tend to clear and uh, tend to enter the endolymphatic space. Characteristic feature often seen in many diseases are endolymphatic hydrops. Endolymphatic hydrops is a pathological and anatomical finding in which endolymphatic space are distended by enlargement of the endolymphatic volume. And many disease is defined as the idiopathic syndrome of endolymphatic hydrops. Also, Image-based diagnosis of endolymphatic hydrops may be a key to understanding inner ear disease, such as uh, many other disease. Imaging of endolymphatic hydrops has not been fully established for humans in vivo. Naganawa developed delayed enhancement with heavily titrated 3D flare image, which made visualization of the endolymphatic hydrops possible for clinical practice. This technique is based on the phenomenon that intravenously administrated GBCA enters the perilymphatic space and does not enter the endolymphatic space. FLIA technique is sensitive for long co low concentration GBCA in fluid and the null point can be controlled by TI. So by controlling TI, positive uh, perilymphatic image in which perilymph shows high signal and positive endolymphatic image in which endolymph shows high signal can be generated. By combining positive uh, perilymph images and positive endolymphatic images, image called hydrops are generated. This hydrops image facilitates recognition of endolymph, step, uh, endolymph space after intravenous administration of single dose GBCA. On a positive uh, perilymph image, so TI is 2250 two millisecond, perilymph in which single dose GBCA distributes shows a high signal and uh, endolymph shows very low to no signal. On a positive endolymphatic image, TI is 2050 millisecond, perilymph in which single dose GBCA distribute shows very low to no signal and endolymph shows high signal. The subtraction of this image visualizes a perilymph as positive and endolymph as negative. So on this hydrops image, endolymph space and perilymph space can be separately, clearly separately visualized. Again, let's see these two cases. These are Hydrops MI2 image, uh, which is a variation of Hydrops images. Now we can make a diagnosis. In the image of case B, dark area, which means the endolymphatic system looks wide in the vestibulum and cochlea. Yes, uh, case A is uh, normal and case B is suffering from many disease. AICE is also useful in these hydrops images. By applying AICE to hydrops image, recognition of endolymphatic system is more comfortable by removing noises. Also, in the cases with many disease, uh, ACE has less noise and diagnosis can be 
uh, clearly made. These images need 20 minutes to acquire positive end length and uh, positive pair length images. The noise reduction by AICE can be used for reducing uh, imaging time on the next slide. We tried reduced imaging time by applying AICE and found that images within 12 minutes and image uh, within five minutes by single dose GBCA can be used for diagnosis of menial disease. Let me move on to the next topic. That is a time dependency of diffusion image. Diffusion time on diffusion weighted image is defined by the large delta minus small delta by three. When the water molecule diffusion was made in the free space, diffusion distance is getting larger by time and the diffusivity doesn't change according to the time. However, biological tissue diffusion uh, tissues, diffusion distance does not get large linearly by time because of the septum or cell walls in the tissue. So the diffusivity shows degrees according to the time. These are DWI of acute infarction with different diffusion time with the same B value. On this image, diffusion time is as short as 30 milliseconds. And on this image, diffusion time is 50 milliseconds. The ADC on different diffusion time shows different value. On shorter diffusion time, ADC uh, tend to be larger, especially in the tissue of acute infarction. Then what will happen if diffusion times become shorter than uh, the 30 milliseconds? By using PGSE, which is a conventional diffusion weather technique, it is very difficult to make diffusion time very short because a very large gradient is needed for very short diffusion time. While oscillating gradient spin echo OGSA method can make diffusion time very short. In this method, motion probing gradient is applied as oscillating gradient and it can make uh, diffusion time very short, keeping the same V value. Variable diffusion time can be applied by varying oscillating frequency. Please look at this case. This is an epidermoid in the supracellar system. The signal of the epidermoid tumor shows relatively higher signal on long diffusion time image and relatively lower signal on short diffusion time, as short as six milliseconds acquired on OGSE method. ADC at short diffusion time tend to be higher than on the images with longer diffusion time. This phenomenon means that the structure of the epidermoid has large influence of the diffusion images and the ADC. Epidermoid has numerous septa in the tissue and this structure uh, prevent water molecules from making free diffusion. In other words, the difference between the ADC with short diffusion time and long diffusion time can be assumed as the index of the tissue microstructure and the non-Gaussianity of the diffusion. Okay. Similar phenomenon has been reported in the cases with cerebral, cerebral infarction. In this report on OGSE and PGSE images uh, were made for acute infarction. The simulation analysis of the diffusivity on OGSE PGSE reveals that the combination of neuronal beading and axonal swelling as a key structural changes leading to the reduced apparent diffusion coefficient after stroke. This is our image. Similarly to the report in the previous slide, uh, infarction lesion shows higher ABC on the OGSE image, and that has shorter diffusion time. It is considered that the ADC at OGSE has an index for diffusivity less influenced by the structure, while 
ADC, ADC at PGSE is largely influenced by tissue structure. And PGSE OGSE ratio can be assumed as an index for non Gaussianity. So it is close to the idea of diffusion kurtosis, which provides information on tissue microstructure. We made plot for ADC at OGSE and PGSE OGSE ratio. And a combination of the ADC at OGSE and PGSE OGSE ratio can represent information of the tissue microstructure and the substance in the tissue. This is a case of low-grade glioma in the corpus callosum. In the set of diffusion images, we have another set of images, that is B0 images, uh, which can be assumed as an index for T2 relaxation and as an index for tissue water content. We plotted ADC at uh, OGSE and PGSE OGSE ratio and signal on B0 image to make tissue characterization. The plotted result showed uh, that there is overlap between the normal tissue and uh, low-grade glioma tissue in the PGSE OGSE ratio, which can be assumed as an index of tissue microstructure. On the other hand, there are differences between the normal tissue and low-grade glioma in the value of ADC and uh, at OGSE and signal on B0 images. And clear tissue discrimination can be made in the combination of ADC at OGSE and signal on B0 images. How about this case? This is a case of malignant lymphoma in the corpus callosum. High signal on diffusion weighted images can be seen, and we plotted uh, ADC at OGSE and PGSE OGSE ratio and signal on B0 images to make tissue characterization for normal tissue, lymphoma tissue, and edema. In this lymphoma case, PGSE OGSE ratio showed higher value compared to normal tissue or edema, suggesting that many septal structures in the tissue, <clears throat> which may be due to very high cellularity of the lymphoma tissue. On the other hand, edema tissue showed overlap to the normal tissue in the PGSE or GSE ratio. The relationship uh, by three plot fig figures can be better visualized by using one cubic display or one triangle display. By combining these three indices, uh, clear tissue characterization can be made. The reverse plot of the voxel, which is a combination of three index, red area uh, presents a Voxel with uh, which has combination of this uh, value of lymphoma and blue area uh, represents a voxel with uh, has a combination of this uh, value of edema. The image of post chemotherapy shows a dramatic reduction of the red area, which has a combination of indices representing lymphoma tissue, and this image can uh, present different information compared to the flare or contrast enhanced MRI. So in conclusion, high signal to noise bring power to images. AICE is a technology that enhances the power of the images. The enhanced power can be delivered to spatial resolution, time resolution, or total scan time. The power of AICE is also effective in the image diagnosis for many of disease. Diffusion phenomenon is time dependent, especially in the complicated tissue. OGSE is one of the techniques to visualize time dependency of the diffusion phenomenon. Display 
of multiple diffusion feature will enhance the understanding of tissue characteristics. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>